Is the Warthog shotgun the best primary for the engineer? In this video, let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the builds you can run for the Warthog Auto 210 without overclocks. Hi guys, I'm Legionless and this channel is about helping you enjoy your games more. In this video, we're going to go over the starting primary weapon for the engineer class in Deep Rock Galactic. By the end of this video, you'll be ready for higher difficulty missions and most of what the game throws at you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more helpful content and like the video to help me out. The Warthog has two large weaknesses to it, it's ammo economy and range. Unfortunately there's not a lot we can do about the range since it's a shotgun, though increasing the damage will help a little. You'll just need to fire a few more times into most ranged enemies you encounter, like web spitters and Mactera. For the Warthog's builds, we'll need to work around the ammo problem so that we're able to comfortably survive and kill multiple waves of enemies without being left with an empty weapon. The first build I recommend for the Warthog is about having something that's always reliable and won't let you down. In tier 1, I run supercharged feed mechanism to increase the fire rate so I can pump out more damage per second. In tier 2, I run expanded ammo bags because with the fast fire rate and fast reload, we're going to be going through ammo pretty quickly. In tier 3, I run quick fire ejector to make the reload faster, which lets me pump out more damage per second and reload faster if and when I'm being overrun by swarms of enemies. In tier 4, I run bigger pellets to get an increase in damage for each shot. And in tier 5, I run minor adjustments to get a faster rate of fire and the Warthog becomes fully automatic. This build is typically my go-to build because the fast fire rate and quick reload let me dump out a lot of shots into enemies when I need to crowd control, and I can get a lot of burst damage for single target damage as well. I'll sometimes swap off loaded shells in tier 2 for expanded ammo bags if it's going to be an especially long mission for an additional 40 shots. That's more of a personal preference you can decide on what means more to you. Overall, I recommend this build for most new players to the engineer class because of how reliable it is at crowd control and single target damage. While not excelling at either, this build is more than enough to successfully do both crowd control and single target damage at any level difficulty. For almost any mission you'll run, this build will hold up well and you won't have to worry about not being able to do your role on the team. If you're not sure what your role in the team is, I have a guide on knowing your class's job in the team that's linked in the card above as well in the description below. For Dreadnoughts and other big enemies, each shot won't hit very hard, but you'll be able to consistently unload nice burst damage into your target. The second build is about making each shot count and having the ammo supplies needed to not be left empty when it matters most. You'll take down Dreadnoughts and bigger enemies a little bit faster, and you shouldn't run into any ammo issues if you're a good shot and hitting weak points on enemies. Crown control is done by making shots hit weak points on enemies to quickly drop everything that comes at you, one by one by one. For tier 1, we're going with overstuff magazine, so there's more ammo in our mag. Tier 2, we're going with loaded shells, which adds 2 pellets to each shot. Each shot will now shoot 10 pellets, making each shot more lethal. For tier 3, we want high capacity magazine, which brings us up to a total of 11 shots per magazine, since we won't be reloading as often, but wanting each shot to hurt. Tier 4 is bigger pellets for more damage per shot, and tier 5 is minor adjustments for more damage per second. This build's focus is on making each shot hit just that much harder. Crowd control will be a little bit tougher with this build compared to the first one, because you won't be spraying and praying. But in a skilled player's hand, this build will do a lot of damage and make short work of trash enemies. For bigger and bulkier enemies, well-placed shots on weak points will chunk down the health of whatever you run into. These builds will be even stronger when we get into the Warthog's overclocks in the next video. In tier 1, I don't recommend overstuffed magazine because a faster rate of fire is just really nice and the larger clip size isn't as significant when the reload is as fast as it is with this build. In tier 2, you won't really go wrong in anything you pick, so feel free to go with the one you favor more. I went with loaded shells because this build is more of a one size fits all. I don't recommend choke in tier 2, even though it would help against the range problem I mentioned. The Warthog just isn't meant to be a weapon used at range, and there's not many opportunities where you'll be shooting at range instead of getting closer to an enemy. In tier 3, recoil dampener might be an option for controller users, but the default recoil isn't very difficult to work with. Again, it's a shotgun, so recoil is kind of what you would expect, so you'd be better off with the faster reload time. In tier 4, the tungsten-coated buckshot shreds through armor, 
making the weak point on the enemy bigger. I don't really recommend this one because you should be shooting the weak points already. And increasing the size of the weak point just isn't as nice as more damage. Turret whip in tier 5 is a good option as well if you want to shoot your turret and have the turret shoot 120 damage of explosive instead of an increased fire rate. But I find the increased fire rate to be more useful. Here's a quick recap of the two builds for making each shot count but still be able to get you through a mission comfortably. Run overstuffed magazine, loaded shells, high capacity magazine, bigger pellets and minor adjustments. For new engineers or those that want something comfortable that will get any job done for you, we'll run supercharged feed mechanism, expanded ammo bags, quick fire ejector, bigger pellets, and minor adjustments on the warthog. For most people, you want to go with the always reliable build because it's just so good at crowd control and helping the engineer do its most important role. Combined with the proximity mine and the sentry turret, swarms of enemies just get absolutely shredded by the engineer. A well defended zone will keep anything from getting too close, especially if you have a good gunner by your side. You'll make the driller on your team feel pretty useless since nothing will ever get too close before you blow them away. In an upcoming video, I'll go over the overclocks the shotgun has and what I recommend. With the Warthog shotgun, you really can't go wrong with either the deep core grenade launcher or the breach cutter as your secondary. Both will be good at crowd control and will largely come down to your preference. Do you want to lob a grenade launcher to enemies from far away and then pick them off with your shotgun? Or do you want to have the breach cutter as your backup for when too much sneaks up on you and you need to instantly get rid of a clump of enemies? If you don't have a preference one way or the other, go with the breach cutter. If you're more of an engineer that likes to challenge and to stand out from the rest of the engineers, check out my next video on the stubby SMG, which is probably one of the weirdest and most unique weapons in the game. Subscribe to the channel if you got something of value out of this guide, and please like and share the video to help me out. Thanks for watching.